Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. We are getting back into Treasure Hunters. We finished at the end of part one. We are starting part two, digging deeper. So let's just jump right in. Here we go. Chapter 31. Congratulations, whoever you are, said the deep and creepy voice. We know that somehow you bested Dirk McDaniels and his colleagues in the quest to find the lost ship of the desert. We also know that you have taken up our challenge and embarked on your second test, finding Mosby's treasure. How do they know that? I asked. They have spies everywhere, said Beck, remember? Be advised, said the computer altered voice. This time you are searching for something that we ourselves could not find. The coded clue in the document will take you only as far as we were able to proceed. Finding the buried treasure, that will be up to you. If you successfully locate it, kindly text photographic evidence to the number noted in the thumb drive file. Once you do, we will contact you again with further instructions. Can we talk back to this like Darth Vader dude? Asked Tommy, rubbing his fingertips along the ribbed speaker in the ceiling, looking for some kind of switch to flick. Since you cannot talk back or ask questions of me at this time, bummer, said Tommy. I will attempt to answer the question you are most likely asking. What's in this game for you? Why should you keep finding these hard to find treasures for us? Exactly, said Tommy, tossing up his arms. You read my mind, bro. Complete these tasks and you will prove to us that you are indeed the finest treasure hunters in all of America. Not to mention the world, asked Tommy. Pass these tests and we will immediately offer you an opportunity to earn $20 million. Happy treasure hunting. We hope to hear from you again soon, whoever you are. Uh, I'm Tommy, said Tommy. Tommy kid. Um, they can't hear you, I reminded him. Interesting. There's a picture, sorry, there you go. It's kind of a funny picture. You can see everyone on the plane. Interesting, said Uncle Richie, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. I figured he was imagining all the card games he would enter with his share of $20 million. What's one third of 20 million, Poppy? Said Mrs. Johnston as she steered the jet off the active runway. I believe our deal was for whatever treasure we found here in Northern Virginia, Pamela. Well, we're in Northern Virginia and this new treasure you just found, I'm tagging along for the full ride. Fine by me, said Tommy, wiggling his eyebrows. You guys, I said, the $20 million deal only happens after we find Mosby's treasure. Bick's right, said Beck. We need to stay focused, which I have been doing this entire flight, said Storm. I noticed she had several paper coffee cups stacked up inside each other in the seat back pocket. I don't think she slept a wink on the whole five hour flight from California. I figured out the clue in the document. It tells us where we need to go next. Where? Dixie. Dipper frozen treats, an ice cream place. Huh? I asked. That's kind of random, added Beck, raising an eyebrow. Sorry, but that was the answer to the substitution cipher in E1 document that I've been working on for the past five hours. To crack it, I realized I needed to add up the numerals and the phone number they want us to text if we should prove successful. Then divide the number of digits in that number by 10. The answer told me how many letters I needed to skip forward in the alphabet to find the coded letter replacements. 
dumbfounded. The rest of us just nodded. Mm. Very, very slowly. So where is this Dixie Dipper frozen treats? I asked. At the intersection of routes 29 and 211 in Warrington, Virginia, said Storm, right in the heart of Mosby's Raiders territory. And now on chapter 32, so my bet is we're going to go there. I think it might be kind of neat to decipher a treasure code. Maybe you can try to create your own language and write your own code and see if someone can decipher it. Let's get back. So we rented a van at the airport and set off for Warrington, Virginia. We also stopped off at a home supply store to pick up a pair of shovels and one of those rock prying bars. We kids are like the Boy Scouts. Be prepared is our family motto. Warrington is very close to where many suspect Mosby hid his treasure, said Storm. Now, we just need to find two really tall pine trees marked with X's near this Dixie Dipper frozen treats place. So what do you think we should do, Bickford? Said Beck, hike through the forest, looking for trees. Not just trees, Rebecca, pine trees. Yep, you guessed it. Groggy from our transcontinental flight, we exploded into twin Tyrid 2003. Oh, that narrows it down, said Beck. It definitely does, I told her. Pine trees are easy to spot. Oh, so are lame brains like you. Pine trees are evergreen, sis. That means they're always green. Just like your breath and your boogers. My breath isn't green. No, it's toxic, like swamp gas. Miss Johnson was gawking at us. She had never witnessed this twin issue before. Give him a minute, said Tommy from behind the wheel. It'll blow over. Hey, what color is swamp gas? I asked. I don't know, but there's a library. Beck pointed out the window at the Warrington branch of the county public library we had just passed. They'd know. They might also know something about Mosby's treasures. Librarians know everything. And even if you don't, they know how to find it. Good point, said Beck. Thanks, Beck. And that's how we ended up in the library, talking to Barbara Rhodes, a research librarian who had grown up in the area and knew all the Mosby legends. We spent the whole afternoon with her. She showed us all sorts of maps and old photographs. So here's some pictures. Oh, there are so many stories about where that burlap sack is buried, Miss Rhodes told us after we'd been doing research together for almost eight hours. But the one I like best, probably because I live here in Warrington, is that hiding place is right up the road at the intersection of routes 29 and 211. Um, isn't that where Dixie Dipper Frozen Treat Stand is located? I asked. The librarian smiled and nodded. Do you think it is? It's like buried in their basement, said Tommy. That's always been my hunch. So why haven't you tried digging it up? Asked Beck. I can't say for sure. Maybe because for me, the legend is more precious than any treasure. If we find Colonel Mosby's buried burlap sack, the story's over. Hmm, true, I thought. But we'd also be one step closer to $20 million. We took pictures of some of the photos and copied several of the maps. Well, we can't thank you enough for your kind assistance, said Uncle Richie. Then he doffed his hat like a prince would and he kissed her hand. Is there ever anything I can do for you? Please, if ever, don't hesitate to call. He handed her a crisp business card. Mrs. Rose twittered. <laughs> Tommy whipped out his phone and recorded a voice memo. Note to self. Order business cards to hand out to the ladies. 
It was dark when we left the library. Brain dead from all those hours in the stacks, we decided to head to Dixie Dipper for some dessert. And maybe we'd check out the basement. Okay, that is the end. We are now at chapter 33. So, hmm, I wonder what they're gonna find in the basement. I think they'll probably try to dig. I think they'll probably try to be sneaky about it. That seems to be how they are. So join us back for the next two chapters. It's getting good. Talk with y'all later. Bye.